first full day of the Euroscience Open Forum in Dublin saw delegates participate in Cost Action FP0905 on biosafety of forest transgenic trees. The session was entitled Planting the Seeds of Genetically Modified Trees. The action focused on key aspects of GMTs related to biosafety, gene targeting along with socio-economic and cost-benefit analysis. This cost action is developing a network of scientists with complementary skills and experience that will interpret existing and generate new biosafety knowledge. Chair of the action is Christina Vittori. She says this action can be used on a worldwide basis. How this action is can be considered a global network in which all the countries in the world are collaborating uh, to develop uh, a final uh, idea and what is known and what should be done in the future. Cost Action is a very important uh, uh, program for us because it has permitted it to put uh, together different countries with different specialties and knowledge, uh, not only from Europe but also from USA, China, uh, Australia, New Zealand, South Africa. And all these uh, persons uh, can share and uh, their knowledge and important formations in relation to forest transgenic trees. And in this way, we can not only give uh, an important contribution to those organizations who has to take uh, decisions, um, policy makers in relation to the use or not use of uh, transgenic trees, but uh, also because we can inform also the public, normal people, why forest transgenic trees are important. Production of transgenic trees um, is currently performed in many labs and so far as, or as far as I know nobody is interested in bringing transgenic trees into natural forests. We are aiming to use transgenic trees for plantation culture and we are clearly say no, no GM tree uh, to be applied for uh, uh, natural forest. We don't want to replace the conventional forestry, but we want to give an alternative to produce wood and to produce very efficiently wood and wood in a high quality in addition to that what can be produced from natural for, uh, forests. It isn't just in North America. Throughout the world there are countries where genetically engineered trees are being produced. And I think that it's our responsibility as a scientific community to ensure that these trees are, are deployed in the most environmentally responsible way. Various world population growth models predict that by the year 2030, the popular world population can be expected to grow by about 50%. So there'll be roughly 9 billion people on the planet by the year 2030. So there will be an increase in demand of natural resources because of the increase in the number of people. But at the same time, there are a lot of uh, economies in the third world that are developing. And, and as these, the standard of living improves in these third world countries, their consumption of resources is increasing. So at the same time, we're removing land from production. Uh, we humans have a, a particularly nasty habit of developing some of our prime agricultural farmland. So we have to build houses on which, in which to house these new people. At the same time, we're removing land from production, so somehow we have to reconcile the disparity between increasing demand as a result of population growth and improving standard of living, and the reduction in our production capability as a result of land taking out of production, either for development or for protection. And I believe that the only way we can do that is, is wise adoption of technology. Environmental risk assessments um, always have uh, a level of uncertainty so that continuous vigilance is required to check the outcomes of, of risk assessments and, and to check that the conclusions of the risk assessment are still being confirmed in practice. Um, and one of the features that we have within the European Union is, is this requirement uh, for, for post-market monitoring. And this means that even um, though a, a, a GM plant has been given clearance for cultivation, it still has to be monitored. Um, and, and if the monitoring shows um, adverse effects, then in fact that GM plant can be withdrawn if, if, if required. With, with GMOs, it's always very important that you set up a system of uh, regulation and, and you look at the, the risks. But obviously, uh, the risks have to be weighed up against the benefits. And uh, the sorts of benefits uh, with GM trees are that um, you can introduce things like pest and disease resistance, uh, drought tolerance, uh, temperature tolerance and things like that um, to, to make the, the, the uh, trees uh, better adapted to particular environments uh, to withstand pests and diseases. 
um, because the difficulty with trees is that it's quite hard to breed these characteristics into trees in a, in a durable way so that throughout the life of a tree it is protected and, and adapted to these environments. So um, one of the things that you can do with genetic engineering is, is to put these traits into trees um, and therefore improve their pr performance and, and productivity. But obviously you then have to think about the implications of, of this from the risk assessment perspective as well. But it's always a matter of a, a balance between you know, what, what are the benefits you get from uh, improved breeding of trees against what are the environmental impacts.